too low on that guys ladies and gentlemen welcome back to quarantine with kenny it's me it's your host from coast to coast to coast to coast mr kenny ms uri foster I- i'm so glad that you guys are here today happy thursday i hope everything's going well and everyone is hugs and kisses and they're finding one another and connecting maybe on the phone or maybe maybe something else i don't know anyway i i, I send you love i say hello to you um i i reach my heart out and I hand it through the phone to you. Welcome to Quarantine with Kenny. We've got a great show for you today. Uh, we have got a guy. Let me tell you about him right now because I'm super excited about it. His name is Josh Barker, ladies and gentlemen. He was raised in Central Florida and also in Park City, Utah. Those are two very different places with very different climates, if I do say so myself. Can't wait to talk to him about that. So he's been a tour musician for about 10 years at this point. He was in Logan Mize's band touring the world world over, and then he has made the decision to step out and do his own artist thing. And his first single came out on July 3rd. It's called Be Right Over, and I think we might even get to hear that a little bit today. But I'm super excited. Uh, I think he's got some funny stories to share for us. I think that he has some... Uh, and uh, I think it's time. I think it's time for everybody to say hello to Mr. Josh Barker! Hey. Um, am I in this fully yet? Yeah, dude, sneak on down there. Get, get on down there. How's, how's life today, man? You okay? It's been great, man. Uh, it's been, quarantine's been weird for everybody, I know. <laughs> That's an understatement of the year. Um, tell me about it, man. How have you been hanging in? What's So I officially, I officially got off the road March 1st. I flew into Nashville, and I was, like, about to start this new career in just producing, songwriting, trying to get a publishing deal, and... and being an artist and uh then the tornadoes hit here in nashville and i was like well i'm gonna wait to kind of do anything insane right now and then all of a sudden then covid hit and i was like well i guess i'm stuck here for good you know what i mean and it's what a better sure. time to be stuck in the house like i have a studio sure. in the house so being able to just record and write here all the time is just incredible so for me it's been a really good time of reflection self-awareness yeah. and just growing and writing and um now releasing music so Great, man. Well, tell me how different it must be. I mean, like, I know the difference, but tell the folks at home, like, the, the, the amount of time where your brain space gets to go between being on the road all the time and that grind and then uh, being at home, what has that done for you? What's that release kind of been for you? It's definitely, like, being on the road is one of those things you get really used to. I got really used to traveling. I was pretty much gone 10 months out of the year for the last five sure. years and touring with different artists here and there and it was just crazy you're always getting on a bus or always hopping on a flight and you feel like you don't you're not really close to anybody anymore but with media you feel like you're close to everyone and you lose a lot of your relationships and it's hard because i've been i've been single for a long time so it's been tough you don't have like that home that's somebody back home that keeps you checked and so you're kind of alone and like all the people you're on the road with usually have relationships and so you come home and you kind of get depressed I, I struggled with that for so long, coming home and just being like, I'm only home for 24 hours. I can do laundry and like maybe hang out with some friends. But all I wanted to do was like stay in my room. I, w- I didn't want to be creative. And it really took a toll on me creatively. And I felt like I wasn't writing as much. I wasn't producing records when I was home. And I just felt like all I was doing was playing somebody else's music. And at the end of the day, that is isn't my dream. And sure. my dream is to write it and create it and do my own stuff. And so <clears throat> I love, I love, everyone that I've toured with it's been a lot of artists over the years and they've all been amazing great family but it's just time for me to move on and yeah man. Thing. And yeah so I'm pretty excited about it so well, good good for you I'm glad that you found this time you know fruitful in the studio and in the writing have you been writing over zoom or you've been writing by yourself like what's um, the flavor I, I, I'm really lucky um I have two roommates that, that live with me and um they both are amazing writers. One's like a PMG songwriter and has a record deal. And the other one's a great rock writer. And so we've been, we kind of all just quarantined ourselves here and started writing songs every day. And uh, 
it was it was kind of wild, you know what I mean, to be able to pitch songs kind of out of quarantine and not be stuck on Zoom, right? So I didn't I didn't really do I did one Zoom, right? Um, but we did we had two of us here in the studio and then one guy elsewhere. So that was kind of cool. But I, I just I said no to a lot of them because I just didn't want to like I, this. I mean, the face to face thing is so different, you know, as a writer, yeah, totally, totally. It's, totally. it's just different, you know. Um, one of my one of my buddies. Yeah, Chris, Chris says. Uh, it's one of the most intimate things you can do in one of the most unintimate ways. So Zoom rights are very weird, especially if you're trying to, I mean, a lot of the songwriting community, what folks at home may not realize is that there's a lot of like entropy. There's a lot of pinging of like, yeah. you're in a room with a person and they like make mention of somebody else because you're vibing, because you're doing well. And so that sort of like new rights and new circles is sort of how this whole thing works and that goes away at zoom because there's yeah. no chance for a vibe there's well, no I, chance I, I feel like there's it. no there's no character so there's no like laughter the laughter is like hard because you're interesting you're facetime and I, I feel like for me i i get a lot of inspiration off of like the energy in a room you sure. know, and what people bring into it how happy they are how sad they are like you know feeding off of that and i i usually come in, come into a room with some ideas but usually I like to feed off of the energy that's going on in that day. If we're all like in a sad mood and we're all going through stuff, let's write about it instead of like sure. writing some idea that you had three months ago that you're feeling completely different now. I just feel like you have such a better way to write and portray your vision. Whoever you're sure. writing with is the same if they're in the same spot, you know, so. So tell me a little bit about what have you been doing to like cope? So outside of writing, like are you binging stuff? Are you cooking? Like some people are getting into yeah. sourdough baking for whatever reason. I am probably, a, I'm, I consider myself a very unique person. Okay. I, uh, I've been, I went to a cabin all last week. I went fishing and kayaking um, and just got in the woods for like a week. Um, I just bought a sailboat, which I haven't taken it out yet, but I'm trying to get into sailing. <laughs> Um, cool. I, I go to the gym every day. So fitness is a huge thing. I love to cook. I cook three meals a day, four meals a day. Um, cool. so everything yeah. kind of like, it's all stuff I love to do that I didn't get to do on the, on, you know, sure. on the for 10 years. So that was yeah. like pinching the hose <laughs> and now you're like, yes, I'm home and I can't do anything anyway. So let's go for it. And I'm, I'm pretty like, I'm pretty, uh, I love to like design things and create things and I'm working on a business plan right now for something else that's completely outside of music. And, um, just a bunch of different ideas and different things and just building up the studio. So there's been a lot of work and then binge watching. I've been, I obviously watched Outer Banks. So I thought that was amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I rewatched it. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to think of what else. I watch a lot of cooking shows, mm -hmm. surprisingly. Who's your, who's your fave? <laughs> Might as well. And you learn stuff instead of like watching something that's going to go in and out. Um, <laughs> So I try to watch stuff that sometimes teaches me something or makes me learn. I, I usually watch uh, TV like late at night usually. Um, okay. I fall asleep really fast. Like last night I started something and I, I was in bed by like 9.30 last night. I was asleep by 10 and I was up by like 5. Hence, night, which hence is the 5 a.m. wake up. Not, today. When, Man. If anyone knows me, that's not me because on the road I used to go to bed at 3 or 4 and then wake up at 8 or 9 and then you know, do it all over again and it was just kind of like you know getting four hours of sleep on the road at night is pretty rough so it's nice yeah no doubt dude good rest. Oh, it's a I grind like a different person and, um it's wild man but there's something really amazing about touring too that i'll never ever let go and i'll definitely do it again probably for my own music yeah. um, but i just don't i don't know it's <laughs> it really wore me down for a long time man absolutely man well you gotta take a break my, especially my liver yeah, there, there is such thing as too much of a good thing. That, that is a real, real deal. So, hey, man, um, I've got some questions from fans that wrote in earlier this week uh, asking me some stuff. Um, so you released Be Right Over in the middle of a, co of a pandemic. Uh, but how did the song come about? Tell us a little bit about that. Um, so I, it's pretty honest. Um, I got a, I got a, there was like this girl I was kind of talking to for a second, and then I left town for my last tour. When I came back, a couple nights into being back, she uh, she texted me and she was like, hey. And I was like, we haven't talked in months. And the last time I talked to her, she was like, I just want to be friends, you know what I mean, kind of thing. <laughs> uh, and then basically the story kind of, I just, I took that story and wrote it into something, um, which was kind of, kind of crazy. But it's, it's definitely a very uh, autobiographical sensual song for me, uh, which was a lot of people were like very, very shocked when I like said sex, especially my mom. My mom's probably on here watching too. When I, I remember sending long? my mom. I remember sending my mom the demo, and she was like, "I really like everything except the sex line." <laughs> and I was like, 
you know, and, and I was raised in such a such an amazing home and just with good values and stuff like that. So for a lot of people, that was like kind of shocking. But um, it's it's a song, you know what I mean? It doesn't mean it's exactly all true. Um, but I, uh, you know, I feel like that that happens a lot nowadays where you uh, are with somebody, not with somebody anymore, and then they give you a text and you can, like instant trigger i'll be right over it's kind of that thing because you just you still care about that person you know and it's like one of those things so fair man great well i hope we get to hear a little bit more about that a little bit later um yeah so what's what other songs are in the pipeline like what's coming down yeah so i've been writing i wrote uh three this past week at the uh cabin um mm -hmm. and just just some different all love stuff that's kind of what my my vibe is all kind of heartbreak and stuff i have one that's going to be coming out hopefully soon called love to be alone um, and then I also have a remix of my song coming out. Um, my cool. Chase Acres is doing a remix of it, and it's super cool. He sent me a couple uh, snippets of it, and it's like very, 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 very neo soul R and B. Um, okay, cool. So it's even more so than my song is, which is pretty. My song's pretty R and B pop, but um, it's it's gonna be cool. So that's gonna be released really first, and then my next single, and then I'm writing a bunch of stuff, and then I'm writing rock stuff, pop stuff, country stuff every day. Not for me. Um, but just for other people and sure, kind of just I've been writing a ton of stuff and I, I usually write I usually write like a few country songs a week to pitch and all that sure stuff. well here's here's one for um I liked this one uh what's what's your best memory of touring specifically this one asked with Logan it can be the funniest or it can be the fondest what what okay if one pokes out in your mind what do you yeah what okay. um so this will maybe some of the fans since I guess a lot of this is based in Germany it was actually we went to Europe um a few times um but last year we went to uh we were in Germany for like six days and we went to Bavaria and that changed my life like Bavaria was the coolest place and we got to shoot a music video that day for Mercedes-Benz and um, so we were like in this big semi truck and we just had such a good time. I remember waking up that morning and we were all just in such good spirits and um, mm. waking up. I remember coming off the bus and I was like in a, I was in a robe and uh, Ugg slippers and I came up and somebody took a photo of me and I actually posted it. Um, but that was just one of like the highlights of the day. And I remember we, uh, we went to like the highlight was being in this castle. It was like from the 1400s and we were shooting the music video there. And I had this idea, all the, all the film guys were like, would you guys have any ideas or anything? And I was like, you know what? We should make a human pyramid. And um, it's actually in the video. And so everybody's like, no, we're all grown men. And so we all got on the ground and like everyone stacked on top of each other. And then we finished up the video. Logan was still shooting other stuff. And we, we the whole tour were just, everybody was just trying to find pints is like what we're, what we're, what we're doing. Like everybody was like, anybody feeling pinty? Like, let's go find a pint. So we're, we're in the middle of this castle and I was like, I gotta go to the bathroom and we walk in and there's this guy and he's serving these amazing like doppelbox and mm -hmm. or a white spears or something like that. And I was just like, this is it. So we, we order like 10 of them and everyone starts just sending beers in the middle of this courtyard in this castle. And that was probably the highlight of it for me. And then we went to some amazing dinner, but that was probably one of the best experiences I've ever had with that band. Um, I love it, man. It's really cool. I'm trying to think of funniest. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of something that's. Funny. Oh, that's if it comes to you, just interrupt me. We're good. No big deal. So hey, um, so every every week on the show, we always try to highlight one um, a charity, something that's yeah. working towards musicians for that. So this week, uh, we've highlighted Music Cares. So I don't know if you know about Music Cares, but so they're the charitable arm of the Recording Academy, where the people in charge of the Grammys. So they provide a safety net for and critical assistance for people uh, in the music industry in times of need. So they've done all sorts of stuff. They, they include help resources during times of financial, medical, and personal emergencies. But then also during COVID, they built their own fund. And I think they've given $20 million during this time now to musicians, which is awesome. I have friends that have taken advantage of that. They take care of all sorts of different things. Rent. They'll even help you just pay rent for a little while if you, if you end up running into a slow season. So really, really cool. If anybody at home is a musician in need of that help, or if you would like to donate to their cause, um, there's a link in the bio here at Sound of Nashville. So that's all good. So now, man, I, I'm here to tell you, I don't know if I've prepared you adequately, but we're going to play a little game now on the show that we call Wheel of Filters. And so what you need to do is put this little 
happy face button with the sparkles on it. All right. And then you should be able to see like all sorts of options on the bottom. There you go. Yes. Where's the some, Where's the magnifying glass? Oh, do you have one? No, I don't have one on here. Oh man, oh, that sucks. Oh no. Wait, why is that a thing? I tried it earlier. Yeah, I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you, man. What yeah. else have you got? What else have you got? Terrible. Oh. Oh, sparkle eyes, dude. Okay, this is it. This is perfect. So you are, you're a cowboy. Let me find something that, that'll go against you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I like that. Okay, I've I've already been an orange before. Um. Oh wait, 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 wait. Wait, where is it? Oh, it's not going to work. Okay. Uh, oh, this is Diplos. This is Diplos. Filter. There it is. Okay. I'm a golden spaceman, and you're a cowboy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to Earth, and you're going to welcome me. All right? Okay. Are we ready for it? Okay, here we go. Howdy, we come brother. in peace. We come in peace. It's wonderful to be here. Where am I? Where have I found myself? You're in the middle of western Montana, brother. What is Montana? Just a good old place where we ride cattle. Cattle. Are these these four-legged creatures that you are around you? Yep, all we do is tip them. What is tipping? Tipping is when you go up behind a cow, you go to the side of it, and you flip her over. You flip large animal over. What happens next? That's it. <laughs> it just lays down then. So does it ever get back up? Oh, they stay down for a little bit and then they come back up. Like everything. <laughs> <laughs> like everything? Oh, just yeah. throwing in some wisdom there. So, okay, okay, wait. So tell me a little bit. I'm, I'm going to go back. I, I, I love talking about voice and all, but um, – Tell me about growing up in Park. Like, what did you do in Park City, Utah? Did you cow tip there? Like, is that where you learned that? Or like, it's kind of a. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, um, yeah. Uh, let me find a good one here. This is fine. Uh, so I, I technically grew up in Florida, but I don't want to claim it. I, I'm not a okay. big Florida, <laughs> I'm not a Florida fan, man. I lived 21 years of my life there, and I really oh, don't. Man. Think and uh, so I, my parents moved to Park City when I moved to Nashville. So I claim Park City now as home. So okay. I, I always tell people Park City, Utah, when, when that's where they yeah. ask. But it's a cool town, man. It is a great what, town. What, what about Florida? What's got you so? Oh, it's hot. It's flat. There's no mountains. All the people move there to die and wear cargo shorts and drive convertible Chrysler Sebrings and become real estate agents, you know? Or if you're on the other side, you're wearing, you have a Salt Life sticker and you're, you know. <laughs> So life. Trying to be somebody you're not. Or those like crazy cases down there, man. People are like always doing weird stuff. You know what I mean? Oh, dude. I Remember the Florida man thing? Yeah. Did you do that? That was amazing. Yeah, what was yours? Cool. Do you remember? What did you say? I don't remember what mine was. I did look it up. I forgot. Uh, I think mine was like naked man brings a crocodile into a robbery situation. I don't remember what it was. It was just, it was such a mashup of Florida yeah. that I love it. There's always so much alligator stuff down there too. It was pretty nuts. Dude, it is insane. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's not question. a bad place though. I do like Florida and I do like a lot of the people there. I just will never live there again for sure. <laughs> so Abby, I don't know if you see Abby here is asking, do you know Noah Schnacky? You guys run into each other uh, I in know. Florida? Yeah. Yeah. Like on a, on a gig, on a thing? Because I know he's a Florida boy, too. I think I have on a gig or something, or in Nashville. But. Oh, good. So, dude, I think it's song time. Yeah. Do you want to – will you, will you share your single with us? Will you do sure. that? Yeah. So, I uh, I was going to play it on guitar, but I think I'm just going to play it on piano. Dude, take us where you want to go, man. Well, look at this crazy filter. I should probably take it off. I don't know. It's kind of cool. Is it cool? Yeah, it's giving me like a vintage vibe. Yeah, there we go. Um, hopefully this sounds good. Hopefully you're able to hear everything. Give it a shot, man. It's funny how rules reverse. You text me first. Not much to say. It's who we am, but hey. I know you need some space. Yours in my place. We can work it out when the sun comes out. I just know that if I get there, I won't ever 
Josh Barker, ladies and gentlemen, tickling those ivories. What'd you say? I said you tickling those ivories, making it making it sexy for everybody today. Thanks, man, I feel like no one plays piano ever. Like with well, their man, well, they're hard to travel with. Yeah. So I feel like it'll be a little different. And I wrote it on I wrote it on a Fender Rhodes, so I thought it'd be a little bit more realistic. So could you cool, hear man. Okay? Yeah, man. Tell me a little bit more about your influences. Like, where, where does that come from? Flipping falsetto. So, doing I, I grew up in church um, all my life, and I was a worship leader for a long time and, and all that stuff. And now I swear in my songs. You know, it's great. Um, <laughs> uh, so, but no, I was, I was raised in, in uh, pretty much all an African-American church, and the music there was just so good. And I remember being young and being like, I, I always had a voice because my grandparents were opera singers, and my parents sang, and my sister sings, and all my family does and no one ever really played instruments though like wasn't a big present thing and no one's ever done music for a living and mm -hmm. i remember being there and i remember sitting in church and just going i can sing like that i want to sing like that one day you know what i mean like i want to learn harmonies i want to learn how to like do these runs and like i'm still not there obviously um but the music side of it inspired me so much with piano and guitar and bass and just groove and feel and i think you know i've, I've done i've played so much country music i've played a lot of um, pop music and rock over the years, but my my personal favorite is just that R and B style mixed mm -hmm. with pop stuff. Just the chord, like the voicings of the major sevens, and just all that stuff. It just sounds different to me in my ear, and I love that side of it. So, yeah, man. Well, that's certainly not common, and certainly not in um, in the country music vein. So, I'm, 
I'm flipping up, starting to flip out on you there. I was, uh, I was gonna try something. See, I'm, I'm a, I'm a old folk singer, songwriter, lyric guy, and yeah. uh, um, the James Taylors of the world. But then also, like, you know, there was some fantastic. Do you, did you ever get into Dashboard Confessional? Yeah, I actually have met Chris a bunch of times, and uh, my my bunch of my friends play for Dashboard. So yeah, dude. Funny thing. Yeah. Like, what, but that's that's completely lyric driven. I mean, I know it's I know it's emo is where it lands, but dude knows how to spin a yarn. Sure. So um, anyway, I've, I've I haven't played this tune, so I had to pull up the uh, I had to pull up the lyric for you. But I'm gonna I'm gonna give this one a try. I like that you're in the heartbreak love situation. I think this oh, is kind of totally I think this is kind of that. So let's 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 just give it a try. It's new enough that I'm gonna have to look off the computer for part of it. But... It's called Lonely Land. The cost is high, the price is cheap. The ticket booth on every street. And every ride goes round and round. Take you up just to let you. To that ground again, here in a lonely land. The, are sh the lines are short, the days are long. It's even dark when the lights are. There's a big time for the main event. Run man showing a broke down tear. And it never ends. Here in a long lane. So come on in, step right up. Take that swing from your luck. And bring everything you can stay. Toss a bone, take a prize, hold it up, realize there ain't no one around to give you to. You can't buy a friend. You're in a long lane. It don't feel the same as it used to. Candy ain't as sweet as you. You could have left, but now I'm stuck. Turn styles out of rusty shirt. Wrong side of the fence. Here in a long way. So come on, it's the part of the best we press your love, bring it for you and stay. Toss a bone, take your prowess, hold it up, realize there ain't no one around to give it to. I can't find your hand here in a lonely land. Yeah, I'm tall enough to fly, but still small enough to hide. It's hard to be a man here in a lonely way. Nice. Great work. I love it, man. Your guitar is amazing, too. Thanks, man. Lonely. Lonely land. If you've been there, you know. Hugs and kisses. Well, man, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you okay. at Sound of Nashville. But what we do when we end the show every single week is we ask a little something from you, and I hope you brought it. I hope you're coming in strong. Can You You got a joke for us? You got a joke to end us here, here John? Yeah, I can, I can get one. Uh, okay, do okay. it. So... If you go into a bathroom American and you walk out of a bathroom American, what does that make you when you're in the bathroom? 
I mean, it seems like European. European, yeah. Hey! Nice. Good one. That was a duet collaboration, ladies. A little and sad joke. Dude, Josh, thank you so much for coming in, thank man. You, uh, everybody, make sure and follow. It's Josh Barker Music, correct? Yes, it is. Yeah. And Josh Barker Music, you can see it right there. Uh, make sure and follow him up. I'm Kenny Foster Music. It's so great. We're here every Thursday with new music for you and fantastic people like Josh. Uh, thank you for your time, man. And Thank we'll you. see you. Later. Thanks for tuning in. Bye, y'all. See ya. Cheers.